Hey everybody, welcome back to Letterman Row. We had to go all the way to the middle of the ocean to track down these two guys, a couple of Buckeyes that you may know pretty well on the Buckeye cruise. It's been a while since both Zach Bourne and Tybus Powell have been on the airways, so we came down. Hey, you've been we're, we're on the Mariner of the Seas. You found us. Found us. <laughs> so we can talk about some defense with these two. Uh, first of all, the Buckeye cruise this is my first one. You guys have been a part of this for a while in yes. the fundraising efforts. It's This is a one-of-a-kind thing. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's magic, man. I tell you that much. There's uh, there's nothing like this. You know, Alabama, Penn State, some of these other colleges have, have tried doing a cruise like this and no one can pull it off. You know, it's uh, it's something truly special. A bunch of memories are made. And, you know, I know I've been coming for multiple years. Tyvis has as well. And uh, the, the relationships that you make, the memories that you make, there's uh, there's nothing like it. I agree with all of that. You know, this is this is one of those things that, you know, when I first got the invite, you know, it was I kind of frowned upon like, ah, do I really want to go on a cruise? Uh -huh. But once I got here and I got to, to meet some of these people that come on here and just the fun that we have, it's just it takes your like it's not about you. You find something that's you finally find something that's bigger than you. You know, you, you're meeting people that's overcome a, a adversity in their life that you probably won't experience. You may. You may not. Mm -hmm. And that makes them real life superheroes. You know, this is all about celebrating life and just having fun and enjoying and being in the moment. And when you guys get around the Brotherhood and the former Buckeyes you know, at, <laughs> at night or during the day, like, <laughs> what are those memories? What are those stories like? We don't have to talk about the fun that's made here <laughs> yeah. necessarily, but. Like what, what are the conversations uh, like? Yeah, you want to know something. You get on this boat and it's like, especially the first time as a former player and like you start interacting with guys that played in the 2000s. You start in interacting with guys who played in the 90s and 80s. And it's like you feel like you were in the locker room with them while yes. you were playing. You yep. know, it's uh, the brotherhood at Ohio State. There's literally nothing like it. It's, uh, you know, I've become so close with some of these older guys and I feel like I played with them in college because of how close we've become. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're, we're 10, 20 years off, right, yeah. from our playing years. And so um, being able to interact with these guys once a year, it's kind of like, you know, you, you just get back, and Tyvis just said it, you get around these guys, it's like you just pick right back up. You yeah. know, it almost feels like you, you just got out of the locker room yesterday with some of these guys, and uh, the camaraderie, God, it couldn't be any stronger. I agree with everything. He, the man is <laughs> yeah. a prophet right yeah. now. <laughs> he definitely well, you said just go exactly, first next time. Yeah. Take it off. <laughs> he yeah. definitely said exactly what it is. Um, um, for example, I, I had uh, breakfast this morning with Tom Cousin on. I've, you know, I've never really had a conversation with him, but man, he's was a great guy. Like I never would have thought. Like Coos, you know, man. he's way, oh, yeah. way, above, way in front of me. But you know, it's like he said, it's just a, it's a brotherhood thing. You know, you you really build a special bond with them off this boat. I even still talk to all of them off the boat. Um, and yeah, I just really enjoy my time being with him. Well, I don't know. Raekwon and Josh were in here a minute ago talking about how you didn't want to come down and fill the box against the rush. So, I, Ooh, yeah, I, I know they didn't say that. <laughs> I know they didn't say that. Listen, that, that's a lie. <laughs> if anything, I had a uh, we had an episode in the Michigan State game. Anybody that's watching, go look it up. Michigan State uh, 2014. Um, it was a series where I came and had to make the tackle on Jeremy Lang for about three times in a row. Mm. You know, the first time, you know, it's cool. You know, it's my job. You know, y'all mess mm. up. Second time, I'm like, all right, you know, what's going on? <laughs> now, the third time, bro, I, I, I'm in there like, all right, listen, <laughs> I, I, I pulled the mouthpiece out and I had, I just flat out, what's going on with the run fits? Like, what's up? I'm not here to do this. Like, I, I got y'all back, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like Zach, we need to pop that in for Buck IQ. Uh, no doubt. That's a, that's a Buck IQ thing. Yeah, that's a safety coming down the field. At least when I was playing next to Ryan Chazier, if they went to a spread look, you'd be like, hey, dude, you, you, got, you got the slot. Keep me inside the box. I don't care. We're switching positions. Go. All right. So if we spin it forward and treat this like a Buck IQ, we know that there's a lot of change coming, Zach. How much of uh, the Jim Knowles 425 scheme uh, intrigues you? What do you ex expect will be coming once? spring ball starts here in about you know, two weeks three weeks uh, i i'm so excited about his defense because you know for so long Ohio State's kind of had the bend but don't break style of defense you know and i know with coach fick there there was there was starting to become some attacking and whatnot but but jim knowles is the kind of guy that's just gonna throw a bunch of stuff at you he's you know came out and and even at oklahoma state but since he's been at Ohio state said we want to attack the offense we don't want to react to what the offense is giving us we want the offense to react to us and i don't think um 
you know, I don't, I don't think Ohio State's ever truly had a defense coordinator with that mindset that's going to be a little risky. That's going to say, hey, I've got the best athletes in the world. We're going to put pressure on this offense. I'm not scared to man guys up on the outside. I'm not scared to uh, the, the whole philosophy of we are so good, we're Ohio State, that we're going to bend and don't break because we think on a 10-play drive, there's no way that they're at some point we're going to yeah. stop them. And you're so scared about the big play. I think with Jim, he's going to come in and just kind of flip that script and say, you want to know something? We're not scared of the big pl- of giving up the big play. We're going to come in there and we're going to bring the heat. I think that's an interesting approach to it, Tyvis, because what Zach's talking about, even if you think about some really good defenses, that Luke Fickle defense mm-hmm. or, or 2014 or Ash, like, you guys were still relatively okay yeah. if a drive was going down the field. You thought you'd get the stop eventually, right? I mean, yeah. not, not that you want that to happen, but you could accept that as long as you didn't put them in the end zone. Yeah, it was one of those things where everybody was just confident in the scheme. You know, it was, I mean, you go through our training camp and you see the ability that your teammates have. You know, you see them make these big time plays. So, if, you know, if somebody give up a, a play, it's, it's, it's the game of football. You know, these guys are on scholarship too. That's going to happen. Our main concern was keeping people out the end zone. And when it was time to buckle down, we got that thing done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How spring ball is always important when you have a new coordinator and, and a couple new position coaches. What will it be like? What will be the emphasis when these guys get started? You know, <clears throat> having de- a new defense coaches, defense coordinator is going to be a little bit different, but it's not as drastic as a new head coach. It's not, you know, as drastic as an entire basically new coaching staff. So <clears throat> these guys on defense, they're going to be used to Ryan Day running practice. The schedule is going to be the same. The structure is going to be the same. Yeah, you're just learning things, but Tyvis will tell you, you know, you're implementing uh, new schematics every week, yes. right? New blitz packages, new looks, whatever it might be during the season. So this is just them. Hey, I just got more time to truly understand what I'm doing, truly understand what the scheme is in front of me, why I'm doing things, kind of slow down a little bit compared to sometimes when you make changes in the middle of the season. Yeah. I would say that it's it gives you a chance to go out there and fly around. You know, you obviously, you know, that first install is going to be different. You know, it's going to be they they probably have a ton of walkthroughs before you even get out there on the field mm-hmm. just to make sure you can see it a little bit, have pieces moving so you be able to make calls. So that first day is just about flying around because you one thing you can't coach is effort. If you, if you can fly around, we can fix you. You know, If right. you make a yeah. mistake, we can fix that. But the effort was one of the things that I didn't see a lot last year. So I want to see that come back around. And, and I, it should be demanded that they fly around on day one. And as far as the installs go, as uh, the more they keep doing it, the better they'll get. Um, spring ball, it's going to be kind of rough because, like I said, it's a totally different scheme. So, I mean, but at the end of the day, it's all coverage is just the same coverage as, as far as a back end standpoint yeah, yeah. goes. Once they once they get that down and they get the chemistry between each other and learn how each other want to play certain routes, I think they'll be fine. Who's somebody you got your, your eye on heading into March and April, Zach, on defense? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give this to you. <laughs> Tyus gets to go first at the last Thank one. Thank you. I, you know what? I got Court Williams. Just a guy I keep saying. You know, I want to see if they can find a way to get him on the field. That was I, Zach's guy. He I just think gave it he. To you. I, <laughs> <laughs> I just think he athletically wise. I think he's just very talented, and they have to find a way to get guys that can make plays on the field. And that could be, you know, maybe in the slot position. I don't know. He could be an extra linebacker or something like that. Yep. But I think he's too good to just sit on the side. I've got two guys. Um, Tyleek Williams, I think, really stepping up this year and yes. being that starter on the inside. And uh, with Jim Knowles' defense, I think he's going to see a lot of one-on-one matchups. And we saw what he was able to do on getting to the quarterback last year. And, mm-hmm. you know, everyone at Ohio State wants to look at the defensive ends. It's, you know, the Bosa's and, and Chase Young and all those guys. But I truly think Tyleek Williams is a game changer on the inside. So I'm excited to see what he can do. And the other guy, Steel Chambers. You know, that's a guy that uh, you know I love the way he plays. I love the way uh, he can run sideline to sideline and make plays. You can relate to him. Yeah, I, I can relate to him, right? Uh, love Steele, love what he's able to do. Um, and I'm excited just to see how Jim puts him in different situations to succeed. You know, Steele's a guy that can blitz. Steele's a guy that... Uh, can read and react off of, off of different things and kind of Jim might let him kind of roam the middle of the field because Steele is a very smart football player. And so uh, I'm excited to see what kind of role Steele plays and how much freedom Jim gives him in that defense. Yeah, huge spring for those uh, silver bullets to try and get back to that level. Uh, no secret when you bring in a new coordinator and a couple of new assistants why uh, that happens. So Ohio State heading into a big spring. We're going to 
probably see these guys back in Columbus soon, but yeah. there's a couple more days. I don't know. I might stay here. You, <laughs> might, you know, find me in the Bahamas if you need me. I, I think, I, yeah, yeah. That, that private beach there in the Bahamas oh, wasn't great. too shabby. No, so. the Coors Lights weren't bad either. Yeah. At least for at least yeah. a couple of months. You know, once that sun starts coming back in Ohio and the weather goes up a little bit, maybe we're inclined to come back. But right you guys now, wouldn't want to be down here in September through November. Why not? Come on. Why not? No, that's true. You want to be in the yeah. horseshoe, Tyvis. You're right. You're right. Yeah. That atmosphere is second to none i can i can't miss out on that until then we'll make the most of the buckeye cruise we appreciate uh roosters and coors light and everybody else for having us out here to tag along and, and find a couple guys that we know decently well zach Bourne and Tyvis powell i am austin ward stay tuned for more coverage of the ohio state buckeyes at lettermanrow.com